So, it was the year 1999 along Osho Disola, part of Lagos State, Nigeria. There was this particular, popular, and very peculiar madman who would occasionally go around pursuing people. He was also a self-acclaimed shaman, what we call in Nigeria, abalist or babalao, that's for the Yoruba, why the Igbos call them the Dibia. Now, why was it popular? He was always eating meat every day. Like every single day, people would see him eating meat. Now, this is so unnatural and people found it very hard, but they attributed it to him being mad since mad people do things that are so out of this world. Well, people who knew him said that he was once a razor blade merchant, but abandoned his trade to go full time into his shaman business. He looked so harmless, tough, but harmless, like most madmen, that people sometimes gave him freebies as he did not possess a home but lived under a bridge in Oshodi Solo. Well, those were all a disguise. He wasn't mad at all. His name was Clifford Oji and he was born in 1966 in Enugu, Nigeria but moved down to Lagos in the mid-1990s and not much is known about him and his childhood but what is known is that Clifford Oji had been killing and eating human flesh since 1992. Yes. Clifford Oji made himself a shanty under the bridge of Toyota bus stop along Osho de Solo Expressway. This expressway is a very popular expressway in Lagos State. And every morning, disguised as a madman, he would pursue unsuspecting victims towards his liar. And in the dead of the night, the atmosphere surrounding his abode would be filled with the aroma of roasted meat every day. He roasted meat every day. People saw him every day eating meat, but they thought it was an innocent madman who just loved eating animal flesh. Well, if only they knew. Now, during this period, there had been a high case of kidnapping. Like, there had been a, a very high influx of kidnapping cases. So many people, children inclusive, had been reported missing, but no one suspected the dirty looking madman. Well, the law caught up with him on February 3rd, 1999, when a man called Joseph Bello, who was going home after a night vigil at his church, heard a strange crime from the butcher's nest to the flyover. You know, earlier I said Clifford Audrey lived under um, the bridge, the, the Toyota bus stop. There was a bridge at Toyota bus stop. He lived under the bridge. Now, in this bridge, there was a flyover. And this was the flyover where Joseph Bello heard a cry from. Now, when he heard this cry from the bushes next to the flyover, he, naturally, he was curious. So he got closer to the bush and he noticed a shack that was built of car tires. He decided to move closer to this shack to see what was making that strange noise. And now as he was moving closer, he smelled an intense odd of cooking flesh and then he peeped into this shack and he got the shock of his life when he peeped he saw human limbs and other parts roasting on the fire Bello then alerted other people around the underpass a crowd gathered and burst into the shack they were confronted by severed feet and chunks of human flesh they also discovered that the cry was from a woman later identified as Awawu Lawal, who had gone missing several days ago. She was rescued and sent to the hospital, but unfortunately, she died a few days later. They stumbled on a collection of human parts in Oji's house. They saw human bones, skulls, legs, and freshly cooked soup with human meats in it. They also saw roasted parts of human beings and also decayed fleshes were found there. Abdomens and head were also recovered that day. One of the severed head that was recovered was identified as that of Eno. 
She was a trader from Aquaibom State who had been reported missing days before. His shack was torn down and a four meter pit was discovered underneath where some of the victims were kept before they were killed and cooked. The police was quickly alerted, but not before the mob had beaten the hell out of him and his accomplice, Tahiru Aliyu. Clifford and Tahiru were arrested and taken to Makinde Police Station in Oshodi. It was in this police station that the whole shocking truth was revealed. Both were not just men eaters, but were also human part sellers, as a lot of cash and checks were found at the home of Clifford Oji. A GSM phone was also discovered. Take note, this was in 1999. GSM phones were a luxury. Phones were just a new thing in Nigeria, so not everyone was using a phone except prominent people because it was terribly expensive. I mean, people could not even afford a GSM a SIM card. Then how was a madman able to get access to a phone, a gadget that was only accessible to 1% of the population. Just 1% of the population could afford a phone. So how was he able to get his hands on one? Mm -hmm. Very suspicious, isn't it? Well, let's proceed. People in the area also said they regularly saw big flashy cars stopping beneath the flyover. It was never confirmed to be true or false, but this explained why some of the victims' heads were never discovered up till today. Clifford and his accomplice, Tahiru, confessed to having killing fellow human beings for dinner. They claimed to be human meat eaters who had been killing for the past seven years, and they claimed that they had killed over people. They claim that most of their victims were young girls who hugged whales. They lured these young girls into their lair by pretending that they were interested in what they wanted to buy. And once they were caught in their net, they pounced on them and killed them for eatable meat. Tahiru was the human hunter, while Clifford was the butcher. You know, specialization. <laughs> in economy, they call it a uh, division of labor this is disgusting and they claim that they usually go for girls with permed air but according to the confession reason we do not know they also claim that they have been eating meat for the past seven years before coming to lagos clifford oji was asked that if he was released that would he continue eating human flesh and then he replied that I quote, yes, to me, there is no difference between human and goat meat, end quote. Oji also went further to confess that he enticed women by embracing them, then exhaling on their foreheads, and after he does this, they would follow him back to the underpass hypnotized. He would then break them to a state of coma before he and Tahiru slaughtered them and roast them for meat. He also claimed that he was not alone in this, that he had between four to ten people who would come to take part in the flesh and then he would go back to hunt for another flesh. Later that year, in 1999, after going for several psychiatric evaluations, he and Tahiru were remanded in Kirikiri prison at Papa. Clifford Oji was discovered dead in prison on August 17, 2012, after displaying hyper insanity. Before his death, he was allegedly taken to Yaba Psychiatric Hospital when he was showing signs of hyper insanity, but he was rejected. Like, why would he be remanded in prison for 13 years before going, without going for trial? We don't know the reason, but this is highly suspicious. Now, unconfirmed reports have it that he might have been shipped abroad by his patrons and sponsors. We don't know. But evidence abounds that 
Clifford Oji is dead. No news till now has been heard about his accomplice, Tahiru. We don't know his whereabouts. We don't know if he has been tried. We don't know if he's dead. We have absolutely no news and no report on Tahiru. So that was the story of Clifford Oji and Tahiru. I really hope you've learned two or more things concerning this story. Like we need to be really careful wherever especially when it's late at night or very early in the morning these kidnappers these ritualists are still out there they're still on rampage so we really need to be careful so thank you for hanging out with me today do have a lovely 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 day bye